Could you please leave this house, Amy? Huh? I was suddenly asked such a thing by my mother-in-law. Come on, mom. Don't say that. <laughs> I said so and laughed, but my mother-in-law's eyes weren't smiling. Wait, are you seriously telling me to leave? As I was puzzled and I didn't understand, my mother-in-law showed me a photo she took out of the drawer. Huh? As soon as I saw the photo, I made up my mind. I'll leave right away. My name is Amy. I'm a 35-year-old office worker. I've been married to Tyler for three years. We were originally colleagues and joined the company at the same time. We worked hard together, supporting and competing with each other every day. At some point, we naturally became closer and we started going out for drinks together as a couple. We're in the same work cohort, so our ages are the same and we have many common topics to talk about. Our values are also similar, so being together feels very comfortable. After that, we started meeting privately and our relationship began. And then after smoothly continuing our relationship for two years, he proposed to me and we decided to get married. After that, we went to his parents' house to give our marriage greetings and I was able to quickly get along with his parents. Amy, you have a wonderful smile and you're a great girl. I thank you very much. Tyler is lucky to have you. <laughs> Wait, Dad, what do you mean by that? <laughs> his parents were very friendly and easy to talk to and they were good people. So, I was confident that this marriage would definitely be a happy one. After completing the formal meeting between both families, we successfully married. After getting married, my husband found a job opening for a mid-career position that he had been interested in for a while. He went for the interview and decided to switch jobs. It was a little sad that he, we couldn't work in the same company anymore, but I wanted to support my husband's wishes. When he got the job, we celebrated together. My husband was able to do the work he wanted and was lively and energetic every day. To help my husband adapt to his new job as quickly as possible, I started taking the initiative to do household chores and try to come home on time as much as possible. I'm home. Oh, welcome back. Dinner is ready. I'm starving. What are we having today? Today, we're having hamburgers. Yes, all change quickly. For the sake of my hardworking husband, I didn't mind taking on the majority of the household chores. In this way, we were enjoying our newlywed life very much. As my husband became more accustomed to his work, I gradually started increasing my overtime hours just like before. I found efficient ways to handle household tasks, and I successfully utilized meal prepping and other methods to save time. Because of this, even with overtime, I had no problem preparing dinner, and I didn't feel physically exhausted. On our days off, we went on trips and enjoyed various fun activities. We also visited my in-laws' house frequently. My in-laws treated me very well, and I felt like they were my real parents. Especially with my mother-in-law, we had a great relationship, and we even went shopping together as a duo. Tyler is our only son, so of course he's adorable, but I also wanted a daughter. That's why I'm truly happy that someone like you, Amy, have become my daughter-in-law. I also think of you as a real parent. Since my own family lives far away in a rural area, I rely on you a lot. Oh, that's so wonderful. Being able to shop for clothes together and have tea at cafes like this is pure happiness. My mother-in-law was always lovely with a constant smile on her face. She had a great sense of humor and always made me laugh. I really liked my mother-in-law. I was thrilled that I could build a good relationship with my in-laws. Kind-hearted and gentle in every way, my in-laws were a source of my happiness. I was living a life full of happiness in my marriage. However, life is unpredictable. One day, when my husband and I were relaxing at home on our day off, his phone rang. Oh, what's a call from mom? I wonder what's going on. Saying so, my husband answered the call. What? Dad has been taken to the hospital? 
We were immediately informed of this by my mother-in-law and we rushed to the hospital. But my father-in-law had already passed away, unable to receive treatment in time. It turned out that my father-in-law had been on his way to a friend's house when he got involved in an accident. We mourned my father-in-law's death deeply. Tears didn't stop flowing even during the funeral. And the one who suffered the most was my mother-in-law. She suddenly became alone, losing her beloved husband. Both my husband and I were deeply concerned about my mother-in-law. I wondered if she was feeling lonely or depressed by herself. I couldn't help but worry like that. Then one day my husband made a suggestion to me. If you're okay with it, Amy, would you like to live together with my mom? I immediately agreed to my husband's suggestion. I've been waiting for you to say that. Thank you so much, Amy. My husband quickly proposed the idea of living together to my mother-in-law. Although she felt sorry for causing trouble, when we assured her that she didn't need to hold back, she happily agreed saying, then let's do it. Soon after, we canceled our apartment lease and moved to my in-law's house. My mother-in-law took on the responsibility of cooking and cleaning for us, a working couple. Her cooking was delicious and I felt happy every day. With my mother-in-law living with us, she started smiling more as if her loneliness had faded away. Please, teach me how to cook. Sure, be prepared because I'll give you strict guidance. That strict discipline is old-fashioned, you know? My mother-in-law and I had built such a relationship that we could joke around like that. We truly had a great bond. And there was no sign of the ill treatment by mother-in-laws often heard in society. The time we spent together as a family having meals with my mother-in-law and husband was when I felt the happiest. Even after that, we continued to live happily, supporting each other as a family. However, amidst all that, another unfortunate event occurred. It was when my mother-in-law's health deteriorated and she required care. She had pre-existing health conditions and they had worsened recently. She became wheelchair bound and we had to assist her with tasks such as using the bathroom and taking a bath. After discussing with my husband, I decided to quit my job and focus on caring for my mother-in-law and managing the household. I'm sorry, Amy. It's because of me. What do you mean? You had to quit your job because of me. And now you have to handle caregiving and all the household chores alone? It must be difficult. Mom, you don't have to worry about that. I'm doing everything willingly and with full understanding. I'll take full responsibility for your care, so please, don't worry. Thank you, Amy. My mother-in-law felt guilty for causing inconvenience due to her wheelchair-bound condition. However, to me, she was just as important as a real parent so caregiving was never a burden for me. From then on, I became a full-time homemaker, focusing on caring for my mother-in-law and managing the household. Since my husband is currently working as a department manager, we were able to sustain our lifestyle without any issues, even with me being a homemaker. However, recently I've noticed a slight change in my husband's behavior. I don't know how to describe it, but he has become a bit colder towards me. Hey, we're having Italian food and minestrone soup again today? I'm sorry, but I change the ingredients each time. Huh? Do you think I'll be satisfied just because you changed the ingredients? You're a homemaker, so you should be more creative, right? Shouldn't a good wife prepare different menus every day? Well... I was taken aback by my husband suddenly making such remarks, and even my mother-in-law who was eating with us was surprised and asked my husband, What's wrong, Tyler? Amy prepares delicious meals for us and there's no need to talk like that, right? When my mother-in-law scolded him, my husband looked down and apologized to me. Oh, I'm sorry, I went too far with my comment. However, I couldn't easily accept his apology because his earlier statement had been quite shocking. Besides, he could have apologized only because his mother scolded him. I still love my husband, of course, but I felt a bit disappointed. And the problem started from there. 
My husband began to verbally abuse me when my mother-in-law wasn't around. You're such a sneaky person trying to win my mom over. You're a homemaker, but you're so arrogant. Don't think you're equal to me just because I support you financially. I was confused and troubled by my husband's sudden change in attitude. Why did his behavior change so drastically? I couldn't figure out the cause and it felt hopeless. Nevertheless, my husband's mistreatment towards me worsened. One day, unable to bear it any longer, I confronted him. Hey, don't you think your recent attitude towards me is too harsh? I'm working hard to take care of your mom and manage the household. And yet, without any sense of gratitude for such things, you treat me this way. I think it's wrong to mock me like that. When I said that, my husband widened his eyes and got angry. Why are you talking back to me like that? That's why I dislike you. Huh? Dislike me? What do you mean? You're always trying to show off how hard you work. I find it annoying, like you're seeking attention. I'm not trying to seek attention or act like that. Calling me an attention seeker is ridiculous. Rather, I try my best not to worry my husband. I don't intend to convey the extent of how difficult things are for me. So why do I have to hear such things? Since the conflicts like this with my husband, our relationship has become quite uncomfortable. It seems like my husband dislikes having meals together as he has started increasing his overtime and coming home late at night. It hey me. Are you okay? You seem to be struggling every day. I'm sorry, mom. Did something happen with Tyler? It was just a minor argument between us as a married couple, but I'll resolve it on my own. I didn't want to worry my mother-in-law. Besides, I was called an attention seeker by my husband, so I couldn't bring myself to rely on anyone. However, even after that, my husband's terrible attitude towards me didn't change and I still didn't know what to do. The stress kept accumulating as the days passed. The only time I found solace was when I was with my mother-in-law during the day. Facing my husband made me feel uncomfortable, and he would continue to insult me in various ways. I had considered divorce from my husband, but I couldn't leave my mother-in-law behind. I was deeply troubled and didn't know what to do. It was at such a time that my mother-in-law suddenly said something like this. Hey me, could you please leave this house? Huh? I was suddenly told this by my mother-in-law. Come on mom, please don't say that. I said that with a smile, but my mother-in-law's eyes were not smiling. Uh, wait. Are you serious about asking me to leave? Yes, I am. I want you to leave this place. Wh why would you say that? Was my mother-in-law treating me so coldly too? Why did I have to endure such mistreatment? At a loss for my words, my mother-in-law took out a photo from a drawer and showed it to me. I want you to see this. I think it will make you understand what I'm saying. Huh? Upon seeing the photo, I made a decision immediately. I'll leave right away. Do so. I don't want to tie you down. Don't worry about me. Saying that, my mother-in-law started packing my things. I obediently packed my belongings into a suitcase as much as I could and returned to my hometown in the countryside. After a long time, I explained to my parents the reason why I left my in-law's house. The photo my mother-in-law showed me was of my husband entering a hotel with an unknown woman. In other words, my husband was having an affair. I couldn't forgive him for such an act. Therefore, I decided to return home and proceed with a divorce from my husband. That night, my husband came home from work and immediately called me. Hurry, what's the meaning of this? Why aren't you at home at this hour? He shouted at me like that. Why? It's because I left that house, obviously. Huh? Oh, you left? You've got to be kidding me. What the hell are you doing outside the house without permission? He seems to think that I just temporarily left the house. I calmly responded to my husband like this. It's not running away from home, I'm getting a divorce from you. Huh? Divorce? My husband was surprised and yelled like that. What the hell? I won't accept that. Too bad, but whether you accept it or not doesn't matter. After all, you're having an affair. Well, an affair? I, I'm not doing something like that. 
Suddenly, my husband's voice became quieter. Clearly, he was flustered. Too bad, there's evidence, including photos, so you can't deny it. Uh... It seemed like my husband understood that I wasn't bluffing. But wait, please wait. It is true that I had an affair, but it was a one-time mistake. I only met that person once, and I haven't been in contact with the person I had an affair with anymore. I really care about you, Amy. I'll apologize as many times as needed for the affair, so please, don't divorce me. My husband suddenly changed his attitude and pleaded with me. And furthermore, he brought up my mother-in-law, suggesting that we continue our married life together. Too bad, but it was your own mother who informed me about your affair. Huh? My mother-in-law was the first to notice the change in my husband's attitude. It seems she had secretly hired a private investigator to investigate the matter without my knowledge. After confirming the investigation results, it turned out that my husband was indeed having an affair. My mother-in-law was deeply shocked by this revelation. She had been contemplating whether to tell me or not. However, she realized that keeping silent would only cause me more pain, so she decided to inform me. I am truly grateful to my mother-in-law for informing me about the affair. I will never forgive you, and you will pay for betraying me. Goodbye, I'm hanging up now. Wait, wait. Without giving him a chance to respond, I hung up the phone and blocked my husband's number. From that point on, I demanded a divorce from my husband through a lawyer and sought compensation from both him and his affair partner. With the evidence against him, my husband couldn't deny his actions and he was required to pay the compensation. It turned out that his affair partner was originally just a casual fling. It seems that my ex-husband wanted to be with her after our divorce. However, it turns out that his affair partner also considered their relationship as just a fling. It seems that the idea of living together after marriage was rejected by her. Really nice of her. He deserves what he got. Regarding my mother-in-law, she immediately decided to move into a nursing facility in response to my ex-husband's affair. With my late father-in-law's inheritance and monthly pension, she was able to afford a decent facility. As a result, she expelled my ex-husband from the house and even sold their family home to cover the costs of the facility. My ex-husband has been completely cut off by my mother-in-law. He is solely responsible for paying the full amount of the alimony. If he fails to make payments some time, his wages may be garnished. He cannot afford to neglect the monthly payments. From now on, no matter how much my ex-husband receives cold stares from others and lives in poverty, he must continue working to pay the alimony. It's all his own doing, and it serves him right. On the other hand, after taking a short break at my parents' house, I returned to the city, found a new job, and secured a reasonably priced rental apartment. This allows me to work comfortably every day while saving money. I still keep in touch with my mother-in-law even after separating from my ex-husband. I visit her at the nursing facility regularly and it feels like a good connection. Moving forward, I will cherish my parents and beloved mother-in-law while enriching my own life. It's truly despicable to betray one's own parents and engage in an affair. I felt a sense of satisfaction seeing my ex-husband's downfall in the end. She's fortunate to have had her mother-in-law as an ally. I hope she continues to have a good relationship with her mother-in-law and meet new people. It's a relief that you were able to divorce your terrible ex-husband. I pray that she finds a wonderful partner in the future. Thank you for watching until the end. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing to our channel. See you in the next video.